This is Shadow Period 33 bringing you another Akron match, this time on Act Natural, a brand new map. So, here we have It Stick in the top right corner and Pickley in the bottom left corner. And we are going to have a rather interesting match. It's a very large map, lots of expansions, lots of resources. And you may have noticed at the start, there's a neat little large resource crate in the center. This is a new addition to the game. In the last version, they added Q plasma crates that are six times larger and go off like a nuke when they die. At the same time, we also have the expansion up here. This is If Sticks Main, If Sticks Natural, right next to him. A couple expansions back here. This is a rather protected third base and a less protected but more valuable second third base, essentially. And then another base back in front here. Pickley is the same sex, has the same setup and just mirrored. So just gonna go back and see what these players have done. So it looks like Pickley has gone for Vekir and Istik has gone for Grekim. Rather interesting setup. So Grekim versus Vekir. I don't think we've seen a lot of Grekim recently. Except for the last match where Sukhanov made a very reckless rush, but that was entertaining, wasn't it? So, at this point we see here that it looks like Ipstick is going for a much more reasonable strategy of building Octos and then using them. Is he using them to build RPs? Because if he isn't, I'm going to be rather annoying. No, okay, he looks like he's going for the much less reasonable strategy of just directly attacking Pickley's base. Or at the very least, doing an Echo Scout. So, he may be undoing this attack after it happens, but at this point he's just going for a straight on attack. So at this point, it looks like Pickley is also sending out a Tethvir. Pickley has built up seven, Q seven RPs, and he's building up eight, one on each resource crate at this point. So he's going to be a bit more economically secure. He has more Q Plasma. He has fewer LP LC, though. At the same time, it looks like Istik is continuing to build up Octos for his main attack. He does, however, have another RP build, so he's not entirely reckless on the economy, but he doesn't have the most economic build. He's going for this rather strong Octo Rush, or Octo Rush here. And he actually has quite low QP LC counts, while Pickley does have fair amount of stockpiles. 100, 100 LC, 90 QP. He's actually pretty well prepared. I'm surprised he's not building a foundation right now. Well, as far as once this infantry unit is done, that he's not building foundation right now. He should be building foundation very soon. He has the resources for it. Well, the Octo's coming up here, and it looks like the Tethyr has not seen them yet, although... Looks like Tetsphere, yeah, it's not seen them. It's going to be seeing it quite soon, though. And here the Octos come. At the same time, within Stick Space, he's actually going for a rather reasonable economic strategy. He's just supporting him with this rush, but he really has to make sure this rush counts. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a waste. And one of the Octos is tying up the Tetsphere. The Tetsphere is being completely torn to shreds. The Octo is... Oh my goodness, the Octo is going to be dealing a lot of damage. So it looks like these Octos are coming in. Going, doing a fair amount of damage. There is a foundation here. It should become a depot fairly soon. Or it would anyway, but it looks like the players have actually changed is going to happen. So I'm just going to go back and check out what the players have actually changed. So it looks like Pickley has built a second foundation. He hasn't been building anything on top of that though. He does have the infantry coming in. He's pulled back the test here. The Octos are resting though. They aren't going for attack. They are going for a later attack. And once again, the Octos are building up. So as I mentioned before, his take is going for a safe economic build, but buffered by this rush here. Like I said, he does have to make this rush count, though, because Pickley does have a better economy, he has a lot more resources, he's got a lot more power, so he's going to be able to do quite a bit with it. So at this point, it looks like the options are coming in, and once again, coming in, there's a lot more infantry, though, going to be able to take advantage of his better position, Pickley, and Octos. Okay, Octos are coming in, taking out one of the Zion Beers, doing a lot of damage, the other infantry aren't helping it out, so it's not really taking advantage of the advantage that Pickley has given himself. Looks like, okay, now at this point, there are infantry coming in, so the Octos are getting attacked, but they are not being focused on, they are not getting a lot of damage from them. They are going to be able to tear through these infantry very quickly. I'm really surprised Pickley has to focus on so I imagine that's what he's doing right now, right here, but at this point, he doesn't have a depot, and he is getting himself torn to shreds by this Octo Rush, and of course, Ipstick is building an economy behind this Octo Rush. He has a refund so he can stop building tech. He has 70 Sinfaros with the Sparrow. He's probably going to be building advanced buildings to get the Sparrow turning into a Spire and be able to get air units, which is a very common strategy for Grekin. Very good idea. Air units are very powerful. So at this point, it looks like, at this iteration of the timeline at least, the Octos are doing a lot of damage. And Zion Beers are coming out to try to defend, and they are being healed very well. The Octos did quite a bit of damage to the infantry. At the very least, they did support, but they didn't actually deal enough damage to their RPs to make it that useful. I'm just going to go back a couple minutes in the past, see what Pickley has done. It looks like Pickley hadn't changed much. He did manage to... Oh no, he still has damage Zion Beer. He actually still isn't changing too much about it, surprisingly enough. It looks like he may be going for... I'm just going to make sure I'm 
on him. So I do am on him now. Looks like he is not going for anything special at this point. He hasn't really changed what he's doing. He just has... He's got a bit better organization of the troops, though. So the troops aren't going to focus too far on these reckons. They are in the front of them, but they aren't still doing enough to take care of these octaves quickly enough. The octaves are going out front back in. The octaves are going to deal a lot of damage. It looks like... Actually, it looks like the octaves back did allow the effect of force time to heal. It looks like the octaves are actually getting more apart. The octaves... So one of the octaves going back, trying to deal with weaknesses in back. And it looks like they're still actually dealing quite a bit of damage. The infantry aren't doing very well, but it doesn't matter. The Octos are going to be eliminated at this point. The Octos have very little health. One Octo is almost dead. The other Octo, one Octo left. And it looks like, yes, the Octos are being damaged quite a bit. This Octo will not last very long. So it looks like Ipstick's rush has been deflected. And particularly at this point, it does have a slightly better economy, but Ipstick has a technological advantage. So it looks like, at this point, Ipstick is sending out a Sebi at a Faro to help expand over in... Where is this now? He's expanding out... Oh, wow, so he's expanding to the safe base, the third I mentioned before, the one in the back corner here. At the same time, it looks like Ipstick has actually changed some stuff in the past, and he's now an Octopod. So he has Octopod, he has a Reef building advanced structure, so he should be able to get a Faro up and aspire a second Faro, that is. And aspire soon. At the same time, it doesn't look like Pickley is doing much to boost his own position at this point. Let's see what it is that Ipstick is doing somewhere in the past here. It looks like he's got... He actually... Okay, he, re, he changed the advanced structures upgrade. He had that upgraded much sooner. So he's now going to be able to build... Likely build a Faro very soon, then build his fire. And at this point, here we are. Okay, an Octo build QP, and he should be building a Spire very soon, I would imagine. And also, interesting enough, Pickley has a lot of resources stockpiled at this point. I'm quite surprised they didn't use it to build a depot or anything yet. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. At any rate, that doesn't matter. What matters is that at this point, Istic does have further power before, so I'm just going to fast forward a bit just to catch up with where the players are now. And it looks like Istic's expansion forces are going towards the expansion, of course. At the same time, it looks like the Octopod itself is just sent him to defend. So at this point, both players are sent him to the defense. It looks like in turn four, Pickley is building heavy depot. Okay, he's building his depot, finally. He was building heavy infantry, and now he's got for depot. He's got for another foundation as well. I'm not sure how much money he's trying to spend, though. It doesn't look like he's really pushing that much. He's getting auto defense as well, so that'll allow him to build turrets and allow his foundations to deal a lot of damage on their own, or at least some damage. And he is expanding as well, so he's going a lot more aggressive, getting a stronger economy, trying to catch up, because this point, as I mentioned before, Ipstick, he is setting up his expansions right here. He's going to be able to, as soon as he actually sets up his expansion, be able to have a second base, and looks like, wow, okay, Pickley is, this is, okay, this is how Pickley normally plays. He builds a ton of foundations, and then he decides what to do with them later on. Not a bad strategy, though, because the foundations do heal, and with auto defense on, that any buildings he puts on there will be powerful, and if he puts on Bastions, well, that's just more defense for him. However, that is, of course, static defense, which, as most RTS players know, any veteran RTS players out there know, that is not always the best idea. So, as it is, his stick as well is building up. He's building up some Farabods, so, whoa. Okay, he's got a couple Octopods. Oh, no, three Octopods and a Farabod. So he's probably going to go for a pretty heavy assault strategy. Octopods are basically the artillery unit of Grecum, and Farabods are basically the bomber unit. And on top of that, they can cloak. So, this combination of units should be quite interesting to see in battle. I'm not sure exactly how... He's planning on using them, but I imagine he's going to be using them very aggressively very soon. So at this point, he only has... Yeah, he's continuing to just keep them in his base. He hasn't actually... Let's see, he actually delayed the Farapod, ultimately. And he doesn't have anything else coming up at this point. His, his units are all focused on the Arcticus. Pickley's forces are expanding. He's getting... He hasn't got any vehicles, mind you, but he does have a lot of resources. He's getting a comm hub so he can control his forces a bit better. And the expansion, as mentioned in the top left corner, is ongoing. So at this point, he, Ipstick has a fairly solid base. Pickley does have a slightly better base, though, economically, which isn't surprising given the way the rush went last time, or earlier on in the game, I should say. And now Ipstick's going for the attack. So Ipstick's attack has commenced. He's going out. He's going to try to deal what damage he can. The Farpod will reach there first, and then supported by four Octopods, or no, three Octopods and a Faro. Pretty good mix. The Faro is especially useful for protecting cloaked units, which, of course, may be there. I mean, the Vecchiary forces could have Zion Turchers. Zion Turchers are cloaked. And actually, how about that? Right there is a Zion Turcher. As well, Bastion has been built, so at this point, we're going to have a pretty tough fought battle for both players, and I think, I would imagine that Vecchio will have a slight advantage, being that it's a home base advantage. He has auto defense, he has a Bastion, and he's got Zion Turcher. As long as the Faro does not detect anything, the Zion Turcher will be able to do a lot of damage, but then the Faro pod as well is cloaked. So it's really a matter of cloak versus cloak detection, and at this point... Oh, another Sepipod. Okay, this Sepipod could just turn it. If he sent, if, if Six sends these Sepipod... <laughs> 
secret. If Ipstick sends these Sepipods forward, the Sepipods will detect, and the Sepipod detection will be crucial. And it looks like... Oh my goodness, is that design Okay. Okay. Looks like something changed in the past. Pickley has actually sent his Zion Churcher up a lot sooner than I thought. He sent it up in the middle, and the Farpod has taken it up, or started to attack it close. Both units have now cloaked. They aren't going to be able to attack each other at all. And unless this Farrow comes in, though, where is it? There it is. This Farrow should be coming in soon, and we'll be able to see the Zion Churcher, and the Zion Churcher will be able to do a lot less damage because of that. And here comes the Semipod, actually. The Semipod will see it much sooner. The Semipod sees it and starts to attack it, and it looks like. There we go, now it's starting to attack it. So now, if they can see where the Zion Churcher is, Zion Churcher will not be able to do a lot of damage, because the Zion Churcher is an anti-ground unit, artillery unit, much like the Octopod, and the forces are coming in, flanking the Zion Churcher, the Zion Churcher is completely destroyed. Back at the base, it looks like another Zion Churcher has been built, and for Ipstick, it looks like he's getting another Firepot and Sepipod. He's going very heavy on these. And it looks like he's actually set up... He, he might be flanking, I'm not sure. He, I think he's just scouting out to see if Pickley has gone for his safe expansion down here. He himself has not built up his safe expansion too much, but it looks like he's probably going to be doing that fairly soon. He's gone back in the past, I would imagine. He has quite a few resources. It would not be surprising if he used them. At this point, Pickley actually has a lot of resources stockpiled, in case you're wondering. Player 2 is Pickley. 360, LC, 480 QP, that's a lot right there. That's enough. He could easily be just stockpiling up at that depot. I'm surprised he's not. Maybe he's out of chrono energy. At any rate, he has no design structure coming in, quote. His expansion's coming in, but it's going to be attacked fairly soon by the Kraken forces who are just marching in. And the Zion will not be able to do much damage because that Sepi Pod right there, that's going to be detecting everything that the Zion Churcher tries to do. Nothing it can do to really get around it. But there are Shin Churchers as well. Very useful, very good choice. The Fire Pod cloaking will be detected by the Shin Churchers. That's Vekir's main detection unit. So both forces have detection, both forces have cloak, but it looks like the cloak is a bit stronger for the... Well, the cloak detection is a bit stronger for Vekir, so overall Vekir should have an easier time with this. However, here comes the Reckon, so we'll see it's the moment of truth. Vekir are getting attacked. The Shinveer here as well, actually, is also another cloak detector to put that out. The Farpod has not bothered to cloak, which is not a bad idea because really there's no point. Really no point, but it looks like it actually did attack much, much further in the past. He actually looks like from where we were sitting, about a minute before I actually realized, oh hey, he's attacking. He was attacking. So now we have the attack coming in. The attack is now coming in, hitting the unplayable pass. It's going to be really hard. At this point, yeah, at this point, it's going to be very difficult for Pickley to counter this. Pickley's going to have to counter it with a Chrono Porter or a Slipgate, rather. He's going to have to get Gay Tech. He's going to have to get Slipgate. He's going to have to send his units back. At this point, it's a very powerful attack. Coming in, it's going to destroy the foundation. He's actually built this kind of the foundation right the expansion. Not a bad idea, necessarily, but foundations are really expensive, and so it's going to be the best idea at this point. However, it looks like it's not. It's a moot point as it is. Instinct forces are dealing a lot of damage. There's taking out the RPs, tapping all of them, and the Octopods are finishing them off. So it looks like this is not going to last very long for Pickley's expansion. Pickley, however, is... Oh, oh my goodness. Did Ipstick just chronoport? I don't know if he did or not, but I think he might have just chronoported. And it looks like he may have... It. Let me just check. He's... Looks like he has... I don't know. Maybe not. It, it's kind of difficult to tell. He did... He did something back... Yes, he did! He upgraded chronoporting! Oh, wow, I... This, he has chronoported units back in the past. It's going to be very useful because he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage... I'm not sure exactly where these units have been chronoported from or to, but he is going to have even more forces. Oh, here we are. Farpods, chronoported right back here to support it before the attack even starts. Very interesting strategy. So this Farpods coming in here, dealing a lot of damage to the RPs, tapping them all, damaging them all, and going to be dealing a ton of damage as it goes through. It looks like the Shinveer as well is trying to do what it can. I mean, the Farpod isn't cloaked, mind you, so it doesn't really matter what the Shinveer can detect. And at this point, this these RPs are going down very hard. And so that's, this is not going to get it all for Pickley. So the attack is coming in very powerfully. Attack once again coming in, but supported by a Farpod from the future. And as well, Scouting Farpod and Sepipod back here are just looking around, make sure there's nothing going on, no fishy business. Pickley can't really expand. He's, he is in a tight corner. I'm not sure how he's going to be able to deal with this. He's going to jump back in the future, see if he actually is trying to deal with this. It looks like he doesn't have a slipgate yet. He has a ton of depots, a ton of vehicles in the future, but that may not count for anything if he doesn't have them support it. He doesn't seem to have a very strong causal structure at this point. He is going to be very fragile, and Istik has actually gone for another a scout. Okay, he's got another scout party up there. He's got another flanking party. He has this map controlled. Istik has awesome map control right now, and he's got the better causal structure as well. It looks like he's just monitoring his old attack, and it looks like... Oh, no, he's not monitoring. He's sent another Chrono Force set. This is really powerful on Istik's part. It looks like there is a lot of vehicles, though, but they're all Shinters, all anti-ground units. Very useful against the Veers. Very... Oh, sorry, the Veers. 
very useful until they become beers against the ground forces, but no use against semi and semi are the big asset of Brecken right now. It looks like Ipsic is going to have a very easy time with the of the army. So, as you see, the Shinters are getting damaged, and it's going to be worn down so hard, and it looks like, at this point, we are not going to see... Uh, scratch that, it looks like something happened! It looks like time travel happened! Time travel happened now. So, let's see, from, from what you can tell, it seems that in the previous iteration, there was a bit more focus on part... Ah, here we are, Gate Tech, yes! So, it appears that Hickley did in fact take my advice and upgrade Gate Tech. This by said he can't hear me. He can't hear me, I assure you. He's upgraded Gate Tech and he sent back units to help out with the attack. Unfortunately, none of them are pet units, but regardless, he is still being able to take care of these Seppi Paws very well, and these Ox Paws will go down in a hurry once the Seppi Paws are down. So, looks like the Grecan support forces are doing a lot of damage, and Ipstick is going to have a harder time recovering from this because there are a lot of vehicles now. Admittedly, of course, many of them are Chrono Clones, they aren't going to last long, but there's still a lot of vehicles. So, this is going to turn around a fair bit. So, at this point, Tigli does have Chrono Forty. I'm going to go back and see what Ipstick is up to back in his own time. Looks like Ipstick is building up, rebuilding his forces. He's probably going to go for another Chrono Port attack. Actually, looks like he's going to, I'm my guess, he's going to go for a Chrono Port attack with legal class units. He's getting, that's the upper tier of units for Grekum, and he is getting the units necessary per generation to get legal class units. So at this point, I would imagine anytime soon we're going to be seeing some legal class units come up. Well, maybe some more pod class units in the meantime. But soon legal class units, I would imagine, will come up. He does have a lot of resources. He has more than enough resources to do this if he has the upgrade already, which I'm not sure if he does. At this point, it looks like... Well, at this point in time, of course, we know that there is something going on in the further past that will be important for Pickley. So at this point, Pickley is actually also handling things further in the future. Back in closer to the present, he is attacking quite hard on the Grecian, on the Grecian forces of Ipstick, and they are not going to last very long. But, of course, this is happening further in the future, so we cannot guarantee that this is going to be staying happening for a long time. Back further in the past, it looks like Ipstick's forces, back where they actually are focusing, Ipstick's forces are building up. He does have he does have Farley Legos, like I said. He does have Leo Class Unit, a couple of Seven Legos coming up. I'm just going to go back to where I was, just to make it a bit more easier to review. So he is getting legal class units. He, these, like I said, the top tier units, very powerful, very expensive though, but he has the money. He has more than enough money, about 500 LC and QP. At the same time, Pickley has a lot of vehicles that he sent back in the past. Not sure where his slipgate is though. That is one thing that's kind of bothering me. I cannot see a slipgate anywhere around here. I'm a bit worried that he may not have ultimately built one, which would cause a paradox. And if there's a paradox, that is some. That's going to be a wild ride. But I have my doubts because it seems like he's got a fairly solid causal structure. At this point. No, actually, I'm not sure. He may not have a slipgate, ultimately. I'm not sure if he ran out of money, or if he ran out of time, or what happened, but he doesn't seem to have built a slipgate in this time, and I'm not sure... He's gonna... He might, don't mind, I'm just gonna browse around in the past. Does he have a slipgate? Does he not have a slipgate? Is he under attack? He's not under attack. He did manage to fend off the forces, but I don't know if he actually ultimately built a slipgate. It looks like he actually did not. Oh, no, no, he does. Okay, so he does build a slipgate. I did miss this. So we did have found he does build a slipgate, he does have a solid causal structure, so this won't be a problem. At the same time, the Grecan forces are just massing up a lot of Leo class units on both sides. So it's about 15 minutes into the game, a lot of Leo class units on both sides, a lot of attacking not going on, but it looks like a lot of attacking is going to start going on. The Vecchio forces are going for an assault, looks like Pickley is going for an attack, the Leo class units are, this is the attack we saw in near the present. The legal class units are going to be able to do their job, I would imagine, but the test pressure very powerful, very good anti-air unit. And I think it's the they don't have any ground-based anti-air, unfortunately, so it's going to be a bit tricky for them, or I should say, they don't have any advanced tech ground-based anti-air. They do have the CEPIs, the low-tech units that are ground-based anti-air, but they do not have high-tech ground-based anti-air. All their anti-air, the higher tech, is the uh, CEPI legal and pods, which are flyers as well. So a test church or a test will be able to... Well, looks like time travel happened! Alright. So, actually, specifically what happened is the Seppi League was brought back in the past to help support the attack. And then ultimately did not come back in the past. So it looks like there was... It appears that Ipstick has actually Chrono Quarter some units back in the past and tried to defend this attack. And it looks like it wasn't really necessary, but the attack did not last particularly long. And the forces of Pickley are, while massing up, not doing a whole lot of damage. So at this point, Chrono Porting is still going on. And see there is no real threat. So the Shin Turkey is up. That's going to be destroyed very quickly because it's only really getting here. And there are not many ground units being fought. So it 
So the Shinjuku did not do much. Shinbiru will be slaughtered very quickly. And it looks like the Sippy Lugo is going to go out for an attack. The, actually, the entire force of it is going to go out for an attack. So this stack is going to be very powerful. Coming in past, and it looks like, as well, resources are... Oh, I should say, actually notice that Pickley has actually teleported all his resource processors to this base right north of his. It was an interesting strategy. Very useful. He doesn't have any in his own base, though. He doesn't have a safe expansion to choose from. That's really all he's got. And now the Sephir Lego is coming in. This is coming in, doing a lot of damage to all air units on Vector's side. So it looks like this is going to be a very powerful strategy. The Sephir Lego and a couple of Far Legos do just as well. But really, the Sephir Lego are doing all that lifting. And this is going to be a very powerful attack. Another Bastion coming up, though. And a Slip Gate as well. And I imagine that there's going to be some sort of order going on to try to save his own body. But there hasn't been any yet. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of damage. Looks like here we have Sephir Lego coming in. One of the Sephir Legos is down. But at this point, the Vector Base is taking heavy fire. Bastions are doing a lot of work, though. They're doing a very good job trying to take out the units they can. Because really, they're the only thing dealing damage at this point. The Shinjiers are doing what? A little bit, but the Bastions are doing most of the heavy lifting. Getting rid of the Far Lego, but or trying to at least, but it didn't last long. The Far Lego is still doing a lot of damage. That is, of course, the bomb unit. And the Scientist is here dealing some damage to air, but not enough. Another Far Lego coming in from the back, and it looks like his stakes forces are very powerful. He's all he's continuing to build up in his base. He's got he's got another he's still has triads up, he has his expansions up. Actually, he hasn't really built up his expansions at all since he started before, but he does have his far leaders coming in consistently. He is actually starting to run out of units. He's not getting any resource income at this point. He's getting some liquid crystal, but no Q plasma. And it looks like the reverse is true for Pickley, or almost true. Actually, no, Pickley has now more resource processors on liquid crystal. He is the expansion quite settled here, but if Ipstick notices, Ipstick's going to be able to do a lot of damage to it. Doesn't look like Ipstick has a lot of money, but he will not have the Chrono Core back if he wants to. And it looks like, at this point, not much is going on. I'm just going to double check. I imagine the Chrono Porting has gone on, and it looks like this is past. No Chrono has, no chrono has gone on. We just saw this. And then later on, we just saw this. We just saw this. And so it looks like, it's hard to tell, it does not appear that any Chrono Porting has gone on. So at this point, what we see is probably what we're going to get for now. None of the players are really taking advantage of the chrono porting tools they have. Back where Pickley is right now, Pickley is... Oh, what is he doing? He hasn't... He's got some resources. He's got a lot of liquid crystal, but he doesn't have a lot of Q-plasma, and he's not got any Zion Beerus. He doesn't have a safe expansion. He's trying to do what he can with his expansion out here, but really, this test... This test pulse will not last very long. Far, between the Far Lego and the Sepi Lego, he is not getting a lot of damage. This is just... I mean, Grekin Tier 3 versus... Vector Tier 0, Tier 1, not a good mix. Really, it needs to be Halkion from the Vector side, and that's not going to be coming, hap coming or happening very soon. So it looks like all players are focusing on this point in time. And actually, did Pickley just jump back in the past? I don't know. It looks like he has a Chrono Port. He just jumped back in the past to look in the past. You know, double check he hasn't actually Chrono Ported anything, done anything tricky. But it looks like at this point, he's just double checking that nothing happened in the past tricky as well. So it looks like Ifstick is going to be in the lead. Ifstick does have a very good position, very solid causal structure. He's actually being a ton of Octos as well. Going to bring them all into battle and just have them help out. But at this point, this is far legal and Sepi Lego are doing a very good job just taking out these forces. However, these Bastions are doing a lot of damage. The auto defense structures are managing to hold off what forces are coming in from Ifstick. But there are a lot of resources coming in. And mind you, it looks like Pixie isn't really spending a lot of money. I check and make sure he's not focusing on it. He, okay, he has spent some more money back here. Yes, he is he is building some Shin... Okay, building a Shin Hakion, and it looks like a Tet Hakion. Yes. So he does have some forces coming up. He doesn't have a second people used up much at all, though. I imagine he's running a bit low on Chrono Energy, because he does have the resources to spend on it. However, even with that, he does have the expansion. His main, his second expansion, his natural, has been lost again. And still, Istik is still scouting out this expansion. Very clever. So Istik, once again, continues to have very good map control, very good causal structure, and it looks like... His forces are just doing a good job, just making sure... Unfortunately, as much as he has good scouting and map control, he is not considered possibility of this expansion here being taken. And that's going to be helping out... Pick, that's been helping him Pickley a lot. That's really all Pickley has. If Pickley loses that expansion, he is going to go down very quickly. Istik has... Well, actually, Istik doesn't have much at this point. His main base has been removed. He, he does have the same expansion on his end, though. And he also has a, his less safe, more valuable expansion in the front here. So, at this point, Ipsic does have a much better economic base, much better map control. Really, the only way that Pickley could possibly pull something out is either a clever chrono board or clever use of unit counters. And it looks like he's going for the former. So, at this point, he has set some units back into the past. It looks, about, looks like it's about four minutes in the past. And he does not... Or, is it about four minutes in the past? It's hard to tell. 
looks like he doesn't really know what he's trying to do. At this point, he did look that far into the past. He's gonna browse around a bit and see if he does have a unit back here, and it doesn't look like he actually does. So he sent the unit fairly far into the past, but it hasn't come up yet, I'm afraid. So it looks like he'll probably be riding the green time wave up. And here, actually, what am I saying? Here we are. This is the unit. That's the unit in question. This is the unit we're talking about. So, just a review here. Let me see where it came from. So, as it was, well, it came from here, went out into main, into the natural here, and both these units coming in, holding off. Wow, okay, he's actually going to save his own expansion in the past. So, the Sympathy Zone Farley Yard taking a lot of damage from the Shin and Teth Halkion. So, the current porting was very useful, very powerful. So, this is going to be a very powerful strategy. It looks like. This should be able to get Pixie back into the game. It won't it won't win him the game, though it will get him back into it because he will have the expansion for a bit longer. It will get him more resources and a much more solid economy, so at this point he can at least build up something closer to the present. So at this point he has defended himself. It doesn't look like he's going to be doing anything else to respond. He's going to browse a bit more in the future to make sure this works out, and indeed it does. So, at this point, if Snake's forces are coming in for an attack, though, I don't know how long they'll last because we do have the forces of Superior. The force that we were just seeing actually looks like battle actions to happen beforehand. So here's the Teth Halcyon, as we saw. So the Teth Halcyon, that was down here, has moved up and is attacking these Octus. These Octus are dealing a lot of damage. We just saw they kill the Teth Halcyon, but they are getting damage themselves. These Octus massive numbers, massive attack, and more Fire League was coming in, another Fire Pod, oh, sorry, the first generation Fire, fire Pod, but more Fire League was coming in, lots of bombers coming in, it's going to be very powerful. Still, Istic has a huge advantage, and it's going to be very hard for Pickley to get around. He's doing what he can, he's doing what he can with the Chrono Porting, but he does not have a lot to work with at this point. And these Octos, however, are also not doing a lot of damage, not attacking much. They cannot attack the Shin Turgeon, they can't attack air, so they are going to be picked off one by one as it happens. So that's just fast forward to watch that. Entertaining. Almost wish I could have, I almost wish I could have the Benny Hill theme running on right now, because that would be really fitting right about now. But it looks like Instinct's probably going to be changing around some stuff to try to make sure that he gets at least not totally a suicide mission. And, as it happens, Farley goes! So Farley goes coming in, and going to be able to take care of the Shin Turcher not... No problem. So the Shin Turcher is soon going to die as it's chasing out of these Octos. Doing what it can. The Octos are capping RP, and they are going to do a lot of damage. But, at this point, as we can see, there's a lot of resources, and more units coming in chrono ported from the future. Actually, chrono ported, double chrono ported, I think. So, at this point, we have powerful units from the Vector side, from Pickley, doing a lot of damage to his oh, to his base, but he's trying to defend at this point. Oh, he's actually com he's been free bombed, so it looks like this is a special ability of the Far Lego. It can cause all units in the vicinity, all enemy units, to stop moving, be unable to move entirely. And that's exactly what it's done. So this Shin Turcher is completely out of luck, but it also is not being attacked, which is quite odd. At any rate, the RP RB destroyed, the Octo is doing a lot of damage, and now the Shin Turcher is being attacked. This ability can be recovered from Oh my, did I miss Okay, so here's let's just recap. This is what happened with the chrono boarding from the looks of it. We have here one Pickley, who has sent units back in time and is going to be sending them up to the north to attack the base that he can. I imagine that he has skipped teleport at this point. So it looks like what he has done now is he has chronoported in the past and he's probably got he does have skip teleport up, so or it should soon. And it looks like he's gonna be trying to send them out forward to deal with damage he can. He's gonna browse through through the timeline a bit. He does he does attack at some point, but it's hard to tell exactly how he gets there. So it looks like like I said, I'm guessing he's going for this. Okay. So he has units coming in here. He's able to defend this attack that came in earlier, he's gonna be able to defend. And he's gonna be able to attack as well in the north from the looks of it. He has units up here. They, one of them is freeze bomb. Actually, two of them are freeze bomb now. The Teth Halcyon and the Shin Turcher. And that's gonna be able to deal a lot of damage. But it looks like. I mean, it should be deal, deal a lot of damage to Pickley. So it looks like Ipsic, once again, continues to press his own advantage. However, the Shin Halcyon is coming and dealing the damage that the Teth. Well, the Teth Turcher wouldn't have, but the Shin Turcher would have. So the Shin Halcyon is still dealing a lot of damage. These Octos are being damaged. They are not gonna be able to do anything about it. These Far Leaves are coming in that we saw before. But. This isn't exactly what we came to see now, is it? I mean, there's an attack on the north, this takes base at six expansion, which really isn't that useful. It's run out pretty much out of resources at this point, so it really isn't much to go for it. But it does look like there's still a hardcore battle. Octos are coming in the main base, though. We are going to try to deal what damage they can, tapping RPs, doing what they can, pretty much ignoring the Shin Halcyon, which is being completely obliterated by the test. Sorry. 
by the Pearl uh, Vigos. And Shinter Trick is also taking one damage. So he's also doing what they can, but they can't really do too much against Bastion. Very powerful force, very powerful defensive turret. And it looks like forces, once again, have come up here. Just, looks like they just waltzed up there. Yeah, it would appear that they just simply waltzed up there, maybe just teleported. And that is not really useful though, because there aren't a lot of resources left in the expansion. And it looks like back to where we were. Okay, now Istic has found it. Back about 26 minutes in the game. Istic has seen the expansion. He doesn't seem to be going, he doesn't seem to be going for it yet, though. He didn't attack him. He's just moving to defend. Though so this one is a little late. He also has a couple of farm buzzers. I'm surprised they, they weren't patrolling like this one is. At any rate, it does look like the Octos are going to be able to take care of these two officers. So this is very damn. We're just going to browse forward in the future. And, oh, wow, okay, this is actually really interesting. So it looks like there was an attempt at defense, because these forces are going to be very interesting to watch. Because it looks like these forces will actually just completely sweep in and start to attack if Six base. Although if Six main resource processors are over right, right south of those units, but still, those units are going to be going for an attack very soon. And it looks like, I'm just going to double check that I didn't miss it. Okay, so now these forces are going for an attack. In case you're wondering, they just... I'm just jumping into the future, so they haven't attacked anything in the meantime, but they are going, they are preparing for an attack, and it looks like Grecken's, the Grecken forces are still holding strong, but at this point, Italy is building up quite strongly. He has a lot of resources, a lot of resources piled up. He has two Shin Halfions, two Zion, or two Teth Halfions, and he's going to be skipping, them, okay, now he's skipping straight into the Grecken base. Istic is going to have a lot of troubles dealing with this. Once they come in, this is going to be very difficult. This is going to be... This could very well be it. It looks like, okay, the Shinhalkins are coming in very strongly. They are coming in, they're attacking the Regenerators. The, regenerator, the base class Regeneration Triad has been destroyed. The pod class Regeneration Triad is soon to be destroyed, which means no more legal class units, no more high tech, no more units of any type, really. There is, however, the pod class, or the base class Triad, or, no, there isn't, there's nothing. So Ipstick has run out of unit production ability except the Arcticus, and the Arcticus will soon die, too. So it looks like at this point, Ipstick, wow, this game is totally turned around. Very well done by Pickley. Looks like he actually did manage to use the corner board very cleverly to get around the, the disadvantage that he had had. This is very powerful. This is very interesting gameplay. So it looks like the Shin Halkion are just going to take care of this Arceus very quickly, and the resource processors of the Grecon forces are not going to be able to do too much. At the same time, the Farpods are attacking the resource processors of Pickley, but no, they aren't. It's just too little, too late, I'm afraid. There is really not much they can do at this point. They have, I mean, they are dealing damage, but these resource processors have taken what they need, and so it looks like this game is going to Pickley. I'm just going to double check to make sure that in the past time of... Now, this game is totally going to Pickley. It doesn't seem like there's anything that can possibly be done to save it for... Yeah, so this has been it. This is this is it. Ipstick has completely lost. Very, it was very interesting though. He has very good map control, very good causal structure, but it just seems like Pickley just managed to just wedge it in. Very interesting. So, this is... Very good use of front reporting, very good use of time travel in general, and very good use of it by Ipstick of the map. Both players, really, I mean, especially this expansion here, that really saved Pickley. That alone is what brought Pickley back into the game. Before that, he would have had nothing. He had no other safe expansions to take. So it looks like at this point, Pickley is just finishing up Ipstick, and I don't know exactly how well it's going to go for Ipstick, except saying he's going to lose. So at this point, Ipstick's probably going to try to do what he can, but he doesn't really have a lot of resources. He has enough to corner for these Sparrow Pods back, but I doubt it will be enough. He's just going, trying to go for a last ditch attack, see if he can just damage his depots, but really, once these Shin Halkions come back to base, which they soon will, I'm sure, that's going to be it. Just going to go around, just to make sure they finish up all the resource processors, but at this point, Ipstick has basically lost the game. He has a ton of resource processors, and not much else. A Sebi, a Faro, an Octo. If he actually is given a chance, he will be able to rebuild, but he does not have much. So, at this point, it's really just up to Pickley to lose. This is Pickley's game to lose, and Istik is just waiting around. At this point, I don't know exactly what he's trying to do beyond maybe rebuilding himself, but it doesn't even look like he's doing the mask. I'm just going to double check. Maybe, yes, actually, no, he is. Okay, so he is He is going to try to rebuild himself as best he can. He does have a lot of resources to stockpile, though. 2,000 LC, 1,600 QP. That's a lot to have stockpile, so it's that bad. But it is going to be a bit of a problem still, because he has to try to deal with all these forces coming in from as soon as Pickley finds this base. He's going to just be completely obliterated. I mean, Pickley... Sure, Pickley has no knowledge of this right now that is still active, but he's going around tearing on the resource processors very quickly. That's not going to be very good. These are the resource processors that basically are giving Ipstick all the resources he has, at least for the Liquid Crystal. Yeah, I mean, he has some here, more for more Liquid Crystal, and then Q-Plasma especially. So this is really it. If 
if the Grecon forces are not able to get around this, and they probably won't be able to, it's just a matter of that gear, just a matter of Pickley coming in, taking out this expansion, and Istic is done. But at this point, Ipstick is being totally crippled. His mission processes are being destroyed. Shin Halakians are taking out everything that they see. This is not going to go very well. This is, like I said, not going very well at all for Ipstick. Pickley is just doing the final cleanup. Ipstick is just trying to see what he can do. But I don't know what he can do. Really, all that he can do at this point is try to rebuild as best he can, spend his resources as best he can, as much as he can, maybe build up a, League of, or a pod class triad. If he's lucky, he should be able to get something up, but I don't know how much he can get up before everything just gets completely away from him. I'm gonna check the future though. It does look like he has actually built up quite a bit though. He does have an Arcus, he does have he actually is building up quite a bit. Pickley really needs this Shin Halkin is actually turning out to be a bit of a mistake for Pickley. I don't know if he doesn't think he's changing up his strategy at all. So he is so Pickley is actually not in the best position either. He's not building up a lot. He doesn't have a lot of Q plasma. He hasn't expanded although he does have this expansion here that will get him a lot of Q plasma, but he doesn't have enough to really get enough Halkions to take care of this. He, so he's gonna have these Halkions taking care of what he can of the research processes, but that's not gonna be enough. There's a lot of forces coming in for Grekum. The Ipstick Ipstick has basically rebuilt his entire army at this point. He's going to be building a lot of Sethi Pods to take care of the Shin Halakians, a lot of Octopods. Really, all he has to do now is Chronoport them back. Then he'll have a very powerful position, be able to completely counterattack, save himself, and maybe even get this game back from where it came. But it looks like at this point, it's hard to tell. Like I said before, at this point, Pickley, it's his game to lose, and it looks like he might actually be losing it, unfortunately. So, if sick as we can see, is just preparing. He's got a huge army coming up. It's, I mean, it's not the highest tech army, but its size is going to make up for it when it comes to fighting these Halakians. Looks like he does have still a pretty secure base. He does know there is a Firepot here, but the Firepot is going to be destroyed very soon by the Shin Halkion and Teth Halkions. So this is not going to last very long. But still, that Firepot was quite interesting. The entire game has been sitting there, just patrolling. So it was impossible for Pickley to get forced there. At this point, Istik is going to be trying to go for a total counterattack. He's got a lot of units. He had a ton of resources stockpiled from that last attack. And he is going to be able to completely use them. I'm a bit surprised though he isn't setting up any for legal class per generation, but to be perfectly honest, I think it probably would be better to have the numbers than to have the tech power, because at this point, his tech power is not going to be, well, that powerful. He won't have the resources to be able to continuously respawn legal class units, where he will be able to continuously spawn pod class units, but at this point, it seems that Pickley does have it in mind. He does realize that there might be an attack coming up. Surprisingly, he's not going to counterattack. He's just sitting in his own base. I guess he's expecting Grec the Grecan forces to attack him, and then... I don't know what. However, it should be noted that, of course, the Grecum can per can sorry, can report back, and that would be a problem for the Vector forces, because the Vector forces... I'm guessing what Pickley is probably trying to do. He has his forces in his base. If Istic comes in, Chrono reports back, he's going to have a ton of forces left to defend. I imagine he's probably going to be setting out a force to attack move towards the north fairly soon, though, just in case nothing does come up, because Istic forces are probably going to Chrono report, but for all he knows, they're not, and if they don't, then he's just sitting turtling in his base and nothing's going on right now. I'm just going to double check to see in the present what this is doing. It looks, oh my goodness, Instinct has actually gone for a straight attack, no chrono porting and nothing. He's probably going to be chrono porting sometime in the middle of the attack, though. Oh, oh no, he's not. He has no PP. He does not have the plasma required to chrono port after this attack, to be honest. So at this point, it looks like the Reckon Force is going to be very powerful. Pickley is has sent his forces back to defend, and here we go. Okay, here's the attack coming up. So here's the attack we just saw, except coming up. There's no chronoporting going to happen though, because as we can see, there's only 68 Q plasma. At the most, if stick could chronoport one unit, and I doubt he's going to bother doing that. He's going to go for a straight attack, very powerful. I don't see Pickley getting out of this very easily, unless he goes for a massive chronoport spam. I think the best he can possibly do is if he chronoports all of his units back about three or four times, and just keeps reinforcing himself. Although at the same time, it looks like if stick's forces, are they delaying it? No, I just went back and did the best. So at this point, if stick really has the advantage, all Pickley can really do is try to build what he can, but the best he can really do is use his chronoport, use his slipkit, I mean. And even then, there isn't a lot he can do. He only has a small amount of Q plasma, only enough to chronoport three units, and that's not going to be enough to save him at this point. He needs to chronoport units about, I don't know, 13, 14 times. Then he'll have a chance, but at this point, it's not going to be very easy at all. So, the Grecon forces are coming in. They are going to be able to do a lot of damage. It looks like Pickley's... I'm just going to check on Pickley's timeline. It looks like Pickley is just holding it here. He has got the forces, he's got it in his base, he's got everything for defense. He doesn't have any Bastion set up, which isn't entirely surprising. He's building up what he can with what money he has, trying to use what QP he has, the last of it. He does have QP resource processors up, but they aren't going to be able to do enough. So at this point, here come the Grecum! So, giant force of pod class units, about a dozen Sebi pods, half a dozen Faro pods, and half a dozen Octopods coming in 
from the north. This is going to be a very powerful attack very soon. And we'll see, hopefully, for Pickley's sake, he can get around this. But really, like I said, I think this is Pickley's... Well, this is where Pickley falls, I imagine. Because the thing is, Pickley did not go for the aggressive finisher. He did not scout out around the map. And like I said, this was his game to lose. And I think he may just have lost it right now. So let's see how this attack goes. And it looks like, at this point, one thing going to pick these favorite, I should point out, is the foundation. All of them heal up units at, when they ever get the chance. Four foundations, that's going to be a lot of healing going on. So, Pickley is going to have a slight advantage in that regard, but really, there is a lot of forces of Ipstick, and Ipstick's forces are going to be able to deal a lot of damage. It's going to be, it's probably going to be way too much to handle. But we shall see fairly soon. So here come Ipstick's forces, and dancing around a bit. They should be coming fairly soon. Come on, you guys. I know you can do it. Put some leg into it. You have eight. All right. Well, anyway, as it stands, Istix forces are just containing Pickley at this point. He's not really doing anything with the container. He hasn't really expanded much any further. He hasn't built more units. He doesn't have. He has a lot of liquid crystal, but he's not using it to build up a ton of units. He's just standing out here. Now he's going for the attack. Okay, there we go. Now the Grekum are going for the attack. Looks like at this point it's going to put on all the health bars. Looks like at this point, Shin Haki on the front is getting completely destroyed. There is a lot of damage being dealt to the Vector's force, not a lot being dealt to the Vector. At this point, there's a lot of splash damage on the Vector's side, and, well, this is going to be completely destroyed. Okay, so the Vector's forces are getting completely obliterated. This is not going well at all for Vector's Vector. The only chance, the only chance is turn up for and he did not manage to take advantage of that. He didn't have to do so. Although he does have more people now, even then, he could, he could double the could double up his army, but he has got it. So at this point, it looks like this has been taken to lose, and he has lost it successfully. But it's rather unfortunate because it was very well fought out. He fought at the very end, and he really had that chance. But unfortunately, he did not capitalize on it. So at this point, Pickley's forces have been completely obliterated. The correct forces are just steamrolling over. Because if Dick has pretty much won the game, it's just a matter of completely steamrolling over Pickley. Pickley is going to surrender anytime soon. I'm really surprised that this is a very interesting turnaround. And I honestly thought that Pickley was going to win. I mean, this is a double comeback. Istik, Istik first coming out with a really great combo structure. He's really, really having good math control, taking care of everything. Pickley is having no way out. Managing to get out, push forward, destroy the Drekken base, and then Pickley getting completely decimated afterwards. This has been quite an interesting game. Not the most action packed necessarily, but still a very interesting strategy, very interesting plays. Unfortunate, of course, that Pickley didn't capitalize on that. I mean, I thought Pickley did a good job. Really, this is a matter of Pickley just losing the game. So, I hope you enjoyed that. This is a very interesting game, and have a good night.